Good morning, Bethel. Today is November the 14th. Uh, we'll be on Bible study guide number 11. And the title of our Sunday school lesson today is Praise for God's Eternal Reign. Praise for God's Eternal Reign. Our Bible background will be Revelations 11. Our printed text will be Revelations 11, 15 through 19. And our devotional reading will be Revelations 1, 19 through 17. Our aim for change. By the end of this lesson, we will define the nature of God's reign for eternity. Reflect on how God's eternal reign affects our faith. And engage in activities that reflect the sovereignty of God in healthy, powerful, and transforming ways. Let us pray. Father God, we just come now giving you praise, giving you honor, giving you glory, God, thanking you for this day one, Father, that we've never seen before. Father, we just praise you for your goodness, God, for you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. God, we just lift you up and we praise you for you are God and God alone. Now, Father, as we go through this lesson, God, we pray that you be with us, teach us and guide us. Uh, teach us the things, God, that we need to learn, uh, to live off of, uh, to believe in, and to trust in you. Father, bless our uh, pastor and his first lady and the whole first family, God. Bless Bethel as, a, Bethel as a whole. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. I in focus. There was a lot of buzz in the halls. The merger had been publicly announced and the company's new owner was visiting each of the recently acquired subsidiaries. Today, he was in town to meet the staff at, at this site. Phil tried to concentrate on the report he was writing on a looming deadline, but he had to stop. An announcement came instructing everyone to go to the large multipurpose room for a question and answer session. At the front of the room, Phil saw the division vice president looking both grim and relieved. Grim because financial pressures had made the companies vulnerable to the takeover, but relieved because the new owning company had a track record of adding resources to help its acquisitions grow. For his part, Phil liked where he worked. The job fulfilled him professionally and offered time to continue his outside interests like volunteering at his church's food pantry and singing with the choir. He had left his previous job because it didn't respect his needs to devote time to serve the Lord through these activities. But the new company had a reputation for honoring its employees' work-life balance, a directive from the top. When the new owner entered the room, the vice president stood and applauded, leaving the group of employees to do likewise. It was a new day at the company and Phil smiled with hope that it would be a better one. What if things worried you, but then turned out for the better? I keep in mind, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Our unifying uh, principle, even though we see a lot of chaos in this world. COVID-19 fights over Build Back Better. People, even, friend, even friends, fighting over who's right, Republicans or Democrats. God and food prices, when correction, gas and food prices on the rise. And we are all wondering when it's all going to come uh, to an end. And this lesson is going to teach us um, to trust in God, that he has a plan, and that we ought to already be celebrating him because God knows exactly what he's doing and where we are going. Our um, focal verses, Revelations, read with me if you have your books, Revelations 11, 15 through 19. And the seventh angel sounded, and, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, 
the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O God Almighty, O Lord our God Almighty, which art, the, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Verse 18 says, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that feared thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroyed the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great Hail. Our people, places, and things. The trumpet. In this section of Revelation 11, the angel sounds a trumpet and the ongoing worship around the throne enters a different uh, phase. The sounding of the trumpet first represents God's judgment. That's in Revelations 8, 6 through 13. In ancient times, the trumpet would sound to call the Israelites to order and draw their attentions to what may be happening at the temple. There is even a feast of trumpets. The blowing of the trumpet is a signal to draw attention to God. First, his holiness, his victories, his liberty, and his guidance are all acknowledged by the trumpet. Then, of course, any time there is an acknowledgement of God, there must uh, be praise. What are some of the things that we see or hear that immediately call us uh, to worship? Well, I know that when we begin to uh, think about God's goodness, um, a song uh, that considers uh, God's worth to us, and the testimony that we have that he's given us, uh, throughout our lives, uh, uh, even life itself, knowing that um, there is no life without God. We have one true God. We should always be worshiping. And just driving down the road and just thinking about God's goodness and, and, and all uh, that, he's, that, he's, that he's done for us, all that his plans are for us, um, should bring up uh, attitude of praise. Um, I know that there are many of you uh, that are traveling to work and just on a trip, sitting at your, do your desk, in your cubicles, sitting in your offices, and start to think about the goodness of God. And, 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 and it causes you to celebrate and start to tell God how good he is and how um, uh, great he is. Um, and that us coming to church should not be the only time that we come uh, before his presence um, and starting to think about his goodness. Churches shouldn't be, I guess what I'm saying is the church is on the inside of us. And when we start thinking about the goodness of Jesus, that, that, that same cliche quote that my soul cries out, hallelujah, uh, thank God for saving me. Um, just having God close to you, living on the inside of you, stirs up that joy. And before you know it, you're crying, driving down the road, crying at the kitchen sink, crying even in the bathroom, in the shower, giving God praise. And being able to um, come amongst our church family and being amongst ourselves as Christian brothers and sisters um, should just be a corporate type of praise and giving God uh, thanks for all the things that he's done for us. Our Bible background. While many traditions have encouraged a reaction of fear of this book, its actual purpose is not to elicit fear, but rather to incite an adulterated and unhindered worship to Almighty God. 
the book of Revelation largely tells the drama of the completion of God's plan played out in three separate acts. Act one uh, is featuring the seals being opened. Act two featuring trumpets heralding the arrival of God's eternal kingdom, which is what we're living for. And act three featuring bowls of judgment on those who reject God. Each act contains songs celebrating the action. Revelation 11 describes the action ending act two, the blowing of the seven trumpet. In verse 16, we see the four and 20 elders giving worship to God, their consecrated purpose, not only in their position notable for seniority and designation, but the level of their praise is so intent that it sets a high standard for anyone endeavoring to attain position within contemporary terrestrial church. Leadership is not about the robes, the titles, or positions. Leadership is ultimately about worship and providing an example of complete devotion to God. So, you know, positions are not um, for a, pe a person to sit up and have the congregation praise them. But leadership is about true worship to God, praising him, his total devotion to who he is. That's where true um, um, uh, leadership is. And if you ever noticed it on your job, when you speak of the Lord and even those that don't even want to hear you talk, eventually come back to you uh, when they need prayer because they see um, that leadership ability in you that you know about Christ and that Christ is in your life and they see that devotion uh, that you have uh, for Christ. <clears throat> so in other words, everything that's coming to pass in these verses is not uh, to bring fear, especially to the Christian. Uh, it's a time for celebration, knowing that those things are coming uh, the earth and all of that stuff is coming to an end that we will finally get to reign and be in the presence of God. At a glance, the worship um, in depth, the worship. Who are these four and 20 elders? How were they selected for their choice roles in the holiest arena? Serving solely to honor, worship, and adore God. This is the beauty uh, of the revelation. While scholars and skeptics alike may dither about the individual identities of each being that is presented here, the point is not who they are, but who God is. Whether beast, elder, or angel, their purpose is to acknowledge God, exemplifying what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. The worship begins with thanksgiving. They honor the eternal God, and they submit themselves as subjects to God's judgment. They also recognize that the wicked works of this world may seem to have success for a time, but they confirm that God has a final say. This worship is not only intense, it is thorough. Um, you know, we look at the people in this world and like so many people are advancing. It seems like so many people are are wearing the right suits, the right hats, the right um, dresses, the right pocketbooks, the right everything. And it seems like everybody is prospering. And we've heard the message um, about, you know, people staying home and washing the cars and people that are serving God. It appears that they're struggling. Um, um, <laughs> they can't even hardly keep their car running. But here's the neighbor don't care nothing about God. He's home cleaning up his car. Ain't planning on coming to church out there uh, before you even up. They're re ready to go to church. They're out there cleaning up their cars or, or cleaning up their yard, giving praise to stuff and not to who God is. But this shows that there's going to come a time that there's going to be a righteous judgment by God. And he's going to award and punish those um, uh, that denied him, uh, rebuked him. Not rebuked him, but um, uh, destroy the earth and that kind of thing. Um, number two, the wonder. In our time, extremes and weather are usually measured for their disruption to the normal flow of activities. The idea of great lightnings, thunder, earthquakes, and hail can be frightening 
inconvenient, and might even ultimately prove disastrous to human or financial collateral. Yet this worship of God precedes an eruption of what appears to be harsh weather. This is not weather the purpose. This is not, however, the purpose. By recognizing God as almighty, eternal, and all-powerful, the elders acknowledge, actually have invoked God to demonstrate his authority over all creation. Who can make lightning but God? Who can move the earth and the sky and wring from and wring from them all their treasures, echoing scenes from the Psalms 96 uh, through 98. John's report covers any questions on whether God is confined to heaven or restricted on earth. He is neither one. He alone is God. He is God all by himself. Uh, verse 15, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. When the seventh and final trumpet is sounded, all the heavenly hosts, angels and redeemed humans, spirits, join to magnify God. God has changed the entire trajectory of the enemy's plan. He is victorious over the enemy, and the voices in heaven are loud about it. We are not certain who these great voices in heaven are, or present, perhaps angels, or martyrs, or other creations. What is clear is their announcement. The time has finally come for Jesus Christ to take the kingdom. These words are now familiar with many of the hallelujah chorus from Handel's Messiah. Um, We've heard that orchestra, whether you realize you heard it or not. But it's that, it's that one song sang by an orchestra that says, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The, chor the chorus in heaven. When Jesus takes his seat in the throne of judgment, the whole heavens and earth will be shouting out, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The highest praise. Hallelujah. The announcement is given with great expectation because we see the completion of the full possession of his authority. Later in John's vision, that possession, though it would be fully realized later, has be begun now. We are currently living in the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Verse 16, and the four and twenty uh, elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God. Verse 17 saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee the great power and has reigned. From the time Jesus took the seventh seal, uh, sealed scroll, un until this very moment, every step of the way, we have seen the expanding consequences. Through all of this, all of the consequences that are happening, there has been captivating, heavily engagement and intensified enthusiasm. Now when the seventh trumpet sounds, all, the, all that exists in heaven, everything that's in heaven, and all creations break out with resounding praise, songs of victory. The 24 elders has been seated. They no longer could contain themselves with what had been revealed in reverence and humility, they rise from their seats and fall on their face. When Jesus took the seven seal scroll, the elders fell down and gave thanks and praise to God. But now, here it was to here it was to a much greater level. They do not simply fall, but fall on their face. They humble themselves more sincerely. They do not just bow. They lay themselves on the ground. They praise God who was, who was and is and is to come, meaning he is forever the same. The elders recognize and acknowledge God's right to rule and stand supreme over all the world. What a glorious day when all kings, when, when our only king is King Jesus. And it makes me say, who is this God. Who is this God? Uh, I mean, we, 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 we know that God lives on the inside of us, but none of us has ever really saw his majesty. 
Uh, and I'm sure if we did, we would all not be so casual uh, when we walk into the church. We wouldn't be so casual when we pick up the word. We wouldn't be so casual when we prayed because of the allness of God. Who is this God that can place a sun in the sky and a moon or the moon in the sky? Uh, uh, create trees with outstretched arms towards the heavens that give God praise. Trees that create creates oxygen for us to breathe. Uh, what's more, a earth that floats in space, um, that just hangs out there, you know? What, who could this God be that only speaks it and it becomes? I'm telling you, church, that we serve an awesome God. And we, if we actually ever realize who this God really is, we'd realize that we don't have a problem that he cannot handle. Even if it's not the outcome uh, that we desire, uh, God has his plan. He has his plan. And it's not solely about us. We're in his plan, but it's not solely about us. And if we could just only trust and believe in him, He's got a plan. He has a way for our lives. He's going to look out and do the things that's required for us to be with him. Um, and I've said so many times, this is his plan. This is not our plan. God is God, and he's all God by himself. Um, and we should just already be praising him in preparation for the eternal praise, uh, being in his presence, loving on him, depending on him, um, and not worrying about stuff. Um, yeah, it's a terrible thing where we got uh, people in government, uh, people in high position that will rob you, cheat you, steal from you, take from you, um, just treat you all the way bad. But we have a God that doesn't sleep or slumber. And he watches over us. And he promises to never leave us or forsake us. And to keep us even into the end of the earth. That's what he says. Into the end of the earth. So no matter what we're going through, we got to realize that he is in charge. And he has a plan for us. Um, I know it gets hard sometimes. It gets hard on all of us because we are human also. Um, but let us. Start to trust God and believe who he is and that he has a plan for our lives. Verse 18. Uh, and the nations were angry, and thy, wrath, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Here we see all the lands in the world are angry. And will not be joyful, welcoming this sight, for there will be those who will be greeted with God's wrath. Wrath is retribution or punishment for an offense or a crime. In the Bible, this wrath can be justified or not. A feeling felt by God or by people. John is careful with his language reporting his vision and only uses orge to describe God's wrath. Notably, though the anger of the nations is described with a similar term, while the nations and the dragon feel wrathful, only God has the power and the authority to act on his justified wrath. The wicked are about to get their due justice, justice from God. It is a long time coming. But they are finally about to be judged by God. On the other hand, God is also passing out rewards to his people, his true servants, who have been faithful to him. Are we faithful to God? Do we try to be faithful to God? People sometimes become angry when others are being rewarded and they are not. We need, we need never question if God is being fair with his judgment. However... 
the rewards that God is dispensing are the fair wages of work done. Whether good or bad, God does not play favorites. Verse 19. The temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple in the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake uh, and great hail. The tabernacle and the temple of the Jews were copies of the actual temple in heaven, which John now sees in his vision. Both the earthly and the heavenly temple symbolizes God's presence. As the Jews knew the temple, God's presence was insulated from unholy mortals by many layers of architect. Gentiles could only go into the temple so far. Women could only go in a little farther. Laymen could not even enter the actual temple building, which only certain priests could do. And as we know, once a year, the priest could only go into the holies of holies um, one time a year to um, offer sacrifices for the sins of God's people. And even before they went in, they had to be had to go through a ritual of cleansing themselves. And we know that um, they had a rope tied around them and <laughs> with a bell. And if that bell started ringing from him walking around in there, splashing the blood on the mercy seat then something was wrong and he had to be um, pulled out of there. But thank God for the Lamb of God, the second Adam, who has redeemed us and brought us back into perfect worship between God and humanity. Those of us who have come into right fellowship with God can rejoice and be glad. We can celebrate and be joyous. Let me say that again. We can celebrate and be joyous because we can worship God. We have been given a choice to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Once we receive him, we are put in perfect relationship with him. So we can look forward to this time when uh, uh, God comes back and uh, starts to hand out judgments and rewards that lets us know um, that we praise God for eternal uh, reign. Our liberating lesson, with so many people trying to fight systemic racism, generational poverty, and mass incarceration, it can be discouraging to see little progress being made. Worry and helplessness can distract us from the good news that is in the end. God will bring ultimate justice Despite what may make noise and distract us from time to time, we can be sure that only God will reign in the end. Better to start our worship now rather than to wait. Our application for activation, we know that the powers of evil will attempt to subvert the work of God's kingdom always. Waging, to, waging a losing battle against him. However, we also know that only God through Christ can bring eternal peace. Believers await in time at the end of this age when evils, evil will no longer exist and the faithfulness of Christ's followers will be rewarded. Until that day, we must work to make God's will be done on earth as it is in his heavenly kingdom. Begin by seeking new ways and reasons to worship God. He has proven himself worthy in the past. And continues to do so today. If we are truly committed to exercising the lifestyle of praise and adoration to God, this world had better watch out for the worshipers. I thank God for you guys' time this week. I hope that you were blessed and continue to give your all to God. Continue to trust Him. Continue to believe Him. No matter what you see, no matter what trial and tribulation that we go through, Know that God reigns, and he reigns before, during, and after this earth. God bless you. Amen.